Okay. And look, Azula, I feel like this part might take this part might take a while <laughs> to break down with the issues with this. Sure. Um, I think the big issue with Kant is like there are basically like three core concepts. Let's just make sure I have the note right over there. Three core concepts at the base of any sort of sane philosophy that you may have. Those are existence, identity, and consciousness. And Kant's philosophy represents a complete, all-out assault, all destruction of all three of these. So in existence, uh, well, you know, the noumenal, that's completely unknowable. right? Existence as a concept is only introduced by your subjective uh, categories of perception. Right? That's, that's, that's not, that's, that's a complete, that means it doesn't actually, you don't know what exists out there. It's completely unknowable. It's completely ineffable. And like, you know, even if you begin to try and speak of the noumenal world, you say things in themselves. Well, what are things? That implies that you have quantity within the noumenal world. So that's got to go. What if you say thing? Where you're talking about something in the noumenal world and you say thing. Well, that implies existence out in the noumenal world, but existence is contributed by your own subjective perception of it. So a thing has to go. So what can you even say about the noumenal world? If you say anything about it, you're immediately applying all of these subjective lenses that you've processed it through. So you can't speak of the noumenal world. And this is why Hegel threw it away, right? But then on the, on the second one, identity, same business, right? How on earth do you know that things are what they are. That's just a subjective processing of the noumenal, right? Consciousness, right? This is, this is a big one here. So Kant's whole sort of thing with consciousness is like, um, let's see here, I've got it written down actually. So we aren't conscious of reality as it is in itself. You know, we are only, perce- we are only perceiving reality as processed by us. Um, so, his me- so his argument is that um, having a certain means of perceiving the world um, means that you, this means that you're perceiving the world with it has to contribute certain things. These are subjective things that it's contributing, like, you know, time, space, existence, identity, you're, because you have specific means of processing it, therefore you aren't processing reality. This means if a consciousness uh, must perceive reality in a certain way, if it's not limited, but by, by, if it is limited so, to some specific means, then that consciousness is invalid and it's not actually perceiving reality. But if it's not perceiving reality, that means it's not conscious of reality, which means it's not a consciousness, which means it doesn't exist. So what is the ideal consciousness on this view? It's a consciousness without some specific means of perceiving reality. So that means a consciousness without a nature, without identity, a consciousness which doesn't exist. So the ideal consciousness to a Kantian is one which does not exist. There is no consciousness on the Kantian view. You can't perceive reality. You can only perceive distortions. This is just completely... It destroys any sort of conscious thought. You can't have it on this view. If I may respond. <laughs> Please do, uh, yes. Um, I would disagree completely with everything in that uh, explanation due to the fact that I think the order of understanding is mistaken. Kant uh, definitely does describe numinal phenomenal difference, and he says that numinal is not very knowable, but um, he clearly comes to the understanding of the numinal Pri- uh, primarily through metaphysics. So understanding of numeral, like the existence of numeral is not something that he doubts. He doesn't say that it's part of like, he says that numeral does exist. We you know numeral, like things in of themselves does exist. It might be like you say, quantity, sure, but things in of themselves, thing on sich is more uh, like the original language. It doesn't maybe have that quantitative explanation. Maybe like it's not very quantitative in that sense. But I don't know. I shouldn't be super uh, uh, explicit in that. But generally, the prim- primacy would be the existence for Kant as well as any um, rationalist that I know of. Uh, existence would be the primal thing. And then 
uh, the, despite existence, like the secondary, like, so in metaphysics, there are many like major questions, but the first question is what is there? Right. And I think Kant does answer this question explicitly with noumenal and phenomenal, right? He does explicitly answer this question of what is there. The only problem he has with is the second question of what is it like? Now he has less knowledge on the fact of what noumenal is like, but he knows a lot about the phenomenal, but he knows that the noumenal exists because existence is like a primary uh, understanding that we would have. Um, like he starts from the uh, metaphysics, therefore it has to be. Uh, I don't think like the primacy would be the metaphysics, therefore I don't think what Zulu says follows because he's uh, attributing Kant to have a uh, for primacy over like um, epistemological understanding, but I don't think that's necessarily true. Uh, that's the way I would critique it, but yes. I mean, starting from metaphysics doesn't mean that you don't have primacy existence. Like the Christians would do this. They would start with their metaphysics and their metaphysics was God said, let there be X, Y, Z. Right? So they have a primacy of consciousness, a great primacy of consciousness. Uh, the, the divine consciousness. This is the first influential form of it. But the, right? So God just thinks that things case, into existence. They, to... they're, start, they're starting from metaphysics, right? They are doing that. They still have primacy of consciousness. But, the, right? but, but hold on. Uh, even in the case that you're describing, God wills something to existence. They would first have to admit that the existence of God is primacy. Right, so it would still be another. Like, I don't see that as a exact true, uh, exactly. True. Well, no, 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 because all God is on their view is a thought thinking of itself, right? Pri primordial consciousness. Yeah, it's, it, they start with consciousness, right? It's ah. Thought thinking of itself. Who thought up the universe? Who thought this all up? Mm -hmm. I that seems like a very Berkeley thing, but I don't know. I, I don't think that's exactly why. A, like most Christians would explain it as well. Most but Christians now they they, they aren't know. like you know the medieval type. You know? I don't know. I don't know who who exactly you're referring to. So maybe you're right. But I'll grant that. Um, though I don't think like even in that case, like at least with many of the what we would call primacy of consciousness thinkers, probably just um, start with the existence is just uh, so presumed, so like given that they don't, they might not explain it so explicitly. That's definitely not the case. Like Descartes is the easiest example here. Yeah, that, that, I, that's with, exactly I think, what I was. Yeah, right. I think, therefore, I am. Right. He starts with I think. No, and but most philosophers do this. They start no, with but in some form. How could how could thinking. how could I think lead to I am before thinking? Ask Descartes. You well, know? The, the, I think it's ridiculous. No, that's the exact. Uh, like I don't think so. The the reason for that is. Existence is primal. It's so given. Like something I agree. Does, existence is primal. Something, something is before there is something to drive from that. It's like then, I know my existence this. is. Why for, is the only philosophy book I've ever picked up uh which starts with existence exists? Why is the only one oh, objectivism and philosophy be, Ayn Rand? Why because none because that's the only one you read. <laughs> No, I've read plenty of philosophy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, but it's just, it is so clear with a lot of like like if you look at most metaphysicians, they will explicitly state uh, the primal um, questions of metaphysics would be what is there and what is it like. They do have to generally understand that certain types of existence is primal and uh, uh, un un unquestionable. Like for instance, um, what would I say as an example? Um, um, it, what, what they're trying to answer is the secondary question of what is it like most of the time, right? Like, that, that would be the problem I would propose. Like, um, um, one example I can give is like, for instance, I think it was Spinoza, but I don't know exactly who it was. One major question of philosophy has been, why is there something rather than nothing? Right. That is a question that is very often asked in philosophy. I don't know who was the originator of that question, but that already assumes that there is something. Right. But that, that is such a given for a lot of philosophers. That is like a, such a, a, a primal ex, like, uh, assumption that they don't even think that it needs explanation other than like, oh, we know it's uh, something is like we, we're thinking there's things like uh, that. Like that, we don't know what it is like. What it, I mean, we, we're not so certain of like 
what we can know about those things, etc. Those are the questions that they might answer secondarily to it. Or it might be like, like with the Descartes example, I do think it necessarily, that he definitely, he de necessarily does understand that existence is primal. It's just that he comes to the understanding of his own existence through this line of reasoning. Oh, I'm thinking that th there's a thinking thing. That thinking thing is me. Like th there are things. Definitely. What are those things? Uh, there's a thinking thing, clearly. So I am that thinking thing. Therefore, I exist. Right. It, it does. It's not he, the case that uh, he, uh, thinking. Yeah. Sorry. He's so obviously not starting with existence there. He's starting with I the first think. position in his philosophy is I think. So it's so clearly <clears throat> starting with thought. Like just read it. Like you know, go on to Reader's Digest and say like ten reasons why a scientist believes in God. And it'll be like, mm -hmm. well, the universe is so orderly, someone must have ordered it this way. So therefore, there must be a god. Like, this is starting with consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. It has consciousness, has metaphysical primary, primacy. The, the idea that there is, that this primacy of consciousness is absent, nearly absent in philosophy, is completely ludicrous. Almost every single philosopher thinks of consciousness being primary. primary. I there are very, think very few. I don't think, think that is existence true. has primacy. Very, very few start with, okay, here are the things which exist. Let's study these things that exist. Most of them are going, right, let's okay. retreat into our minds. Let's retreat into our minds and build up these massive systems where we don't even care about what's out there. Like on the Kantian view, the, he doesn't give a shit. He thinks it's completely unknowable what's out there. We have to retreat into our minds. Our minds have primacy. Our minds actually contribute the laws of nature, that's where they come from. They come from our minds. They come from a conscious process. Like, that is so obviously primacy of consciousness. Okay, so the problem you're proposing, I just don't see what you're... I, I, don't, I just don't I, I agree with you on what you're claiming. Like, it, it is, of course, what you're saying is seeming like it, but it's not the case. Because, like, if you think most philosophers... Start with primacy of consciousness. Why do you think metaphysics' main question is explicitly asked as what is there? Right? Many people do understand that it, the question of what is there is uh, like that. Like that, that is a main. Like that's the first question metaphysics metaphysicists ask, right? Uh, because it is like, like everyone understands that there is something. So, but one example I will give is William F. Quine. Like I don't like this guy at all, but he has such a simple answer to the question that I think most, unless like nihilists, besides nihilists, it is so given, it is so acceptable, so understandable. Um, Quine answers the question of what is there as simply as everything, right? Everything's there. What is a thing? Now, that's the more important question that people may come to tackle. That, that That's the reason why you'll see a lot of philosophers retreat into their consciousness because they have far more access to their consciousness than they do towards external world. Um, like they, they might have more doubts about their sense data, etc. These are uh, not very controversial. What I'm, ex what I'm explaining is like the, the, the things that they're, that, that, that is more controversial. They're of course going to take more times to explain. Yeah. That's the way I would describe the pro uh, issue with that. Okay. So having and the question you know, of what is there, that doesn't mean that existence has primacy. You can ask what there is, um, whilst holding that what there is was thought up by God or whatever. You know that doesn't imply that existence has prim metaphysical primacy. You can still have it. Well, what there is had to have come from some consciousness to think it up into being this way. Right? You can still have consciousness as primacy whilst having the question of what is there. I don't see that at all. So, <laughs> yeah, interject for a moment. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. As far as you know, going back to the whole topic of in this discussion here of Descartes, uh, you know, we have the I think, therefore I am. Mm -hmm. So, the way I see it, you know, my personal take on this is that thinking implies consciousness, and you know, there's some type of awareness here. So, if we're aware, then that would mean that even if that's what you know, kind of we call strictly the phenomenal phenomena in this case, let's say that. Let's say that you're somebody who's a solipsist, for example, where they don't believe in anything outside of their own consciousness. They believe that the entire world outside of them is false. Mm -hmm. But what they do believe in is simply their own consciousness, their own aware of, own awareness. Mm -hmm. So if we acknowledge that that is, you know, a fact, 
then the question arises, okay, well, why am I conscious? Why am I perceiving this consciousness? Why am I here? You know, somebody, that consciousness would have to arise from something in this case. Mm -hmm. So we might thinking, okay, there must be something outside of what Kant would, in this case, define as the phenomenal conscious mm -hmm. that put this consciousness into place. And we could call that, you know, in the, well, in this case, that would be, I guess, the noumenal world. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say that in any, even in the case of someone who tries to go so far into the phenomenal understanding, there has to be that, there has to be some type of acknowledgement of the noumenal outside of that. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem here, uh, as far as the uh, noumenal world, is that this not only does this noumenal world have to exist, it has to precede the existence of the phenomenal world. So that, you know, there cannot be, you know, consciousness unless there's something outside of consciousness that is essentially mm -hmm. putting it into existence here. So, based off of that, I'm just curious exactly, you know, how anybody could justify a philosophy that does not acknowledge, that does not acknowledge some type of real you know, some type of real noumenal world, you know, outside of the phenomenal. But that, that's really just, just my personal. Well, yeah, I don't, I, would I don't, say, I, I, would I don't think any of us here would believe that, like, there yeah. is something like, um, non phenomenal, like, th there is, like, something that someone can believe, like, non phenomenal, like, uh, existence cannot be real. Like, a, like, the first thing, I don't think any of us here are primacy of consciousness. I don't, I'm not. I'm clearly, right, like, yeah. a existence. Uh, like pr primarily an existence, like ontology precedes epistemology kind of uh, believer, personally. Um, uh, and I do think like most philosophers probably would agree. I think like that that's the charitable explanation for me. And I definitely do think Kant, Kant's noumenal is the exemplar of that, as you described. But I don't think Zulu believes like, like Kant or Descartes believes what I'm describing. So that might be the I, um, uh, tension we have, right? Um, he believes that, uh, in, I'll let him speak. Actually, I shouldn't be, uh, categorizing these mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Well, I would say, um, in Evan's description there, um, he was smuggling in all these concepts, like existing, <laughs> like being the case, like doing all these things. He was smuggling these through the door, but you can't speak of the noumenal world this way because you, cause existence is only pertains to the phenomenal world. That's, these are all concepts about reason, but reason only pertains to the phenomenal. So you can't speak of the noumenal world in this way. You can't say the noumenal world must exist, because what does existence mean? Existence only pertains to the noumenal. F sorry, the phenomenal. Right? It would be like saying the noumenal world is over there. Well, no, it's not over there, right? Because over there is a discussing space. It's discussing where something is. It's geometry, which only applies to the phenomenal. These things are necessary. On Kant's view, they're necessary for the phenomenal, but you can't say them about the noumenal world. This is why Hegel so easily just, just destroyed the noumenal and just threw it out the window. Because you can't even say that it has to be the case that the noumenal world exists. Because it doesn't make sense to say it exists in the noumenal world. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, I I, I can understand that, yes. 